So again, my name is Maurice Manning, and I'm just going to walk us through a few examples of how um, we can integrate our Python notebooks with either Box or Drive. Um, the idea here, obviously, is if you're working on data in your, uh, the, the researchers that I've been working with since I've been uh, with Research IT are mostly storing their uh, their, their image data, their data they're processing on uh, Box. Um, last week I ran into someone who was storing his on G Drive. He had just crazy amounts on G Drive, so I spent the weekend writing a little immigrant integration component for him, and, and we'll walk through that as well. Um, and that allows you, obviously, within your within your notebook to pull your data over to Savio, place it in your uh, Scratch storage, do some work on it, do the processing, and then uh, push results uh, back to uh, back to Box, uh, which comes in handy. Um, the, the big hassle about this, and, and the one that I will probably keep people from actually using it, is before you can do the integration, uh, before you can use the SDK, um, you need to go to the Box uh, developers or the uh, Google developers uh, site and get a client ID, uh, which is a bit of a pain, um, but you only have to do it once, and, and once, that is, um, once that's knocked off, uh, then you're uh, able to... Use the um, use the SDK. Where's this at? There we go. Okay, so here's the box developer site. Make, that a bigger, Make it a little bigger. Uh, the text. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, and you just you create an application. Um, you don't. Uh, you can decide what the granularity is here. You can create one client ID and use it for all your projects. Uh, your lab could decide we'll have one application ID for this kind of workflow and a different application ID for that kind of workflow. Obviously, the idea here is that Box and Google want to know who's hammering their their uh, their um, API with all kinds of calls. So if you're you know if you're sending off a, you know a million calls a day, um, they might disable uh, your your um, ID. So again, this is what um, this looks like um, when you fill out the form here. Um, this is just a demo for me. So I went in, put in a quick description, my email address. What you get back is a client ID. You have to give it a redirect ID. What I used was the Berkeley uh, CAS login. So that'll force a, a login at Berkeley, which will be how you develop, uh, which will how, be how you authenticate with the system. And it provides you with a client ID and a client secret. So you hold, uh, so you grab those, and um, the way I've set up my notebook, which we'll see in just a minute, um, you put, I put them in just an app config file, and this is how they walk you through it in the um, getting started guide. If you go to the Box Python SDK site, uh, they're going to walk you through something that you'll that will look very similar to the notebook we're about to try. So um, that's how Box does it. Yeah. Before you go on, could you say a few words about what Box is and how it might be useful to us? Yes, uh, I can do that. So there are people here that um, understand Box better than me, and please ch uh, chime in if, if um, I miss anything. But basically, uh, Be Connected provides um, the Box service to anyone at Berkeley uh, to store as much stuff as they like. There's no upper limit, and, um, and it's free. And so it provides you a place to use. We're, we've been using it mostly with the research teams I've dealt with as sort of active data management. The data you're currently working on, you place it in Box. You're able to um, you're able to access that and and share it among uh, 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 team members on, on on in your group and that sort of thing. So um, does that? And again, it's free and there's no upper limit. So obviously, uh, a lot of research teams here make use of it. Uh, the same is true for Google Drive. Uh, Be Connected provides provides a G Drive uh, um, uh, capability to um, all Berkeley, uh, uh, everyone at Berkeley. And again, there's no upper drive on that. Now there are some limits, um, and I'm probably going to miss these. There's a size file size limit on Box <coughs> that I believe is 15 gigs. Uh, Aaron Roberts, does that sound right to you? Hit it. And then uh, what is the file size limit on G Drive? Is much larger. Um, something big. Um, now, the, the, one of the problems with this is our Globus. Uh, if you've used Globus at the at um, here at Berkeley, um, that's how you push data up to Savio. It doesn't have a connector. 
uh, to box or beat G drive. That may change in the future, but for right now, if you want, if you have a bunch of stuff stored in box and you want to get it to Savio, you'd have to pull it off of box down onto your laptop, and then fire up Glovis and push it up to um, up to Savio. Uh, what we're going to walk through today just cuts out that step and allows your notebooks to grab it directly. It obviously isn't as fast as data as uh, moving data with Globus, um, but it does um, but it does allow you to integrate your notebooks with those two repositories. Yeah. Does that apply for OBL? Um, Berkeley Lab does not have a contract with Box, but they do have a contract with Google. Uh, so unlimited G drive for for lab resources is available. And uh, on the lab cluster resources, yes, you can invoke Jupyter Hub and use a similar approach to pull data from Google Drive to the lab clusters. That can be done. Okay, so uh, thank you, um, Krishna. So we just went through, if you're going to integrate with Box, you need to go to the Box developer's website, fill out a little form, you get back the uh, the client ID and client secret, and I, like I said, I just uh, put it in the same place uh, that they show you in the example. You can also put it in a keychain and those sorts of things if you like. Um, the, uh, the other... Uh, yeah, let's do Google now. So it's the, the same pattern for Google. You have to go to the Google site. You have, this is, uh, this is got, uh, console developers Google. You go in, you, uh, uh, you know, create an account, you identify yourself, and you say, and, and again, it walks you through this on the, uh, on the getting started guide uh, for the Google Drive API, exactly how to do this. And there's even a wizard that walks you through those steps. But it'll take you to the site that looks like this. Uh, you'll fill out some information, and what they give you—it's a little different than what—it's a little different than how Box <coughs> does it. They give you a JSON file. Uh, that, they, they make that a little bigger too. Oh, um, yeah, I'm not sure how to do that in the. Oh, very good. All right. Um, so they their default, and there's probably other ways to do this, but I kept it simple. Um, they're Default location that they look your, for your credentials is in a dot credentials folder off of your home drive, and you just drop the JSON in there, and it looks like that. So that that's your credential. Um, so those are the steps you have to sort of get set up to start using the SDK. Once you have those in place, uh, then you can get started in your notebook. The SDKs um, um, for both Box and Google will be part of your vanilla uh, kernels that you can choose on the notebooks. Um, but if you want to create your own uh, kernel, you will have to install the SDK that you're, uh, that you're interested in using in your own kernel as well. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, first, first we're gonna walk through um, just general, generally what, um, what one of these notebooks looks like. There is some boilerplate code that you have to have in place, and all of these notebooks are available in, uh, in, the, um, in the BRC um, GitHub site. And you can look at those examples and 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 um, use them as you like. Um, but generally, you have to have, and they have these in the starting examples. We have a little um, function to store our tokens and pull them back out. The thing that I have in place for the um, for the box uh, integration that I haven't put in place for Google yet, so we can kind of see the difference, is I also have a refresh token uh, for box. So once I actually get authenticated against box and I ask it for a refresh token, I can run this, uh, this notebook for months without ever needing to re-auth. It'll just keep updating the refresh token and you just keep running. So that's, that's handy and, it, and it, it saves you a few steps. But that is what the refresh token function does. So let's walk through this um, from the beginning. Again, those are my token storage functions. Uh, that's where I pull the information out of my um, config files. Here's my OAuth. So you can see in this tab, I'm going to go get my OAuth, and um, and at the end I print out a little uh, the name of my top level folder so that I can see that I actually did connect. So it was able to connect because it was able to give me back uh, the name of my top level box folder. 
and then uh, and this one, the, the thing about both of these APIs is they're very minimalist REST APIs. So there's no nice fun there's no nice convenience functions like go find me all the folders named foo. You have to walk the folders yourself. Um, there's no bulk transfers. You know, go download every um, you know every file under this. You have to walk the folders and pull the files down yourself. So um, um, Rick Jaffe, one of the uh, one of the guys in in research IT says he has found some folks that have put um, some wrapper uh, modules around these and put in some of those convenience functions. I haven't had a time, uh, chance to look at that yet, but I have created a few convenience functions in some of the other notebooks that you can leverage if, if you like. Um, so here we're just going to basically loop through. I'm going to get folder ID zero is your top level folder. I'm going to say um, let's walk through the folders in there. I, I print out just for fun. I print out my folder name and then I say, oh, and if you find any image files, download that to my scratch drive into test. So um, again, this isn't anything complex, but it shows you that uh, we can go grab um, folder. You can go grab files. You can get the file names back. Whoops. And um, and basically pull things down as you need them. Now um, I've created a created a very small. Let me see. Make sure I've gotten rid of that. One got you got you here is that um, again since it's a very basic REST API when you say upload if it's a new file and you say upload it'll upload it fine if it's a old file if it's an existing file in your box folder and you say upload it'll throw an error so you, you have to write those functions that says first check if it's there if it's not there upload it if it is there update it things like that. There's none, again, it's, it's very simplistic interface and, and you have to account for all those things. Um, but in this case, in my box API, I've gotten rid of that, uh, gotten rid of that test folder and we're going to basically upload a test file. Um, I create a new folder here. Uh, I grab the ID back and then I say upload uh, just uh, an image file, foo.jpg into that folder. Um, so gets the uh, creates the new folder. It says here's the file I'm going to upload and then I get the result back and I named the folder this is a test. So we'll go look for that. This is a test and it put it, it put a, a, a full, um, the JPEG in there. So that's a general idea. It's, it's pretty basic once you get the, the developer ID and the OAuth stuff set up. But um, any questions on that so far? So we'll go through the other script that you can find in the GitHub repository is uh, something called Authentication Bootstrap. What that does is it allows you to authenticate against Box and then it asks Box for that refresh token and stores it for you in that file. And um, what again, what that allows is when I ran this notebook, I didn't have to authenticate because I had a refresh token already created. But the first time you do this, you'll need to run the authentication bootstrap. And there's something there I kind of want to point out to you, and that's why we'll walk through it. It's pretty simple. Um, basically, the boilerplate is the same, but here is where I have have to log in. I have to authenticate against. Uh, um, I have to authenticate against Box. What it responds gives you back is a little uh, uh, a token, not a token, but a code, an authorization code that you then have to stick in um, in this line in order to get that refresh token back. It's a little clunky. Um, we'll see that the way Google does it is actually nicer. Um, and the catch is you have right now the way they have the API, you only have about 30 seconds to grab the code out of the end of the URL and paste it in and run this. Otherwise, it will <coughs> tell you the code's expired. It took me a little while because I thought, I'm doing something wrong, but I realized I just wasn't cutting and pasting fast enough. <laughs> so we're gonna, we'll are gonna we go through this, and I'll, I'll show you uh, what's involved. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to re-authenticate against Box. Same boiler Kate plate code is above. What I do want to do eventually is pull this out into another notebook that you import. Uh, but to keep things simple, um, I'll, I'll, I left it in. So here it is. We're going to uh, request the, uh, uh, the auth code um, from Box. And when I get it, I need to paste it in down here and run that to get an access and refresh token back. So here we go. Boom. I got the new URL. 
it says yes I'm granting access to box from this um, from this account I authenticate and it says good that works so then you go down to the end of the URL you grab this code copy copy come back here to the auth I paste it in here and run this before I time out oh, that didn't work did I not hit go ah see I timed out I was too slow all right watch I'll do it faster this time ready go and access to box I'm successful there it is go back I paste it here I know what I did wrong whoops uh, see I'm under pressure this isn't easy and no it's not working why is that there is no output yeah it's nothing it worked yeah this could be around the next part Ah, oh, there it is. Yes, you're right. So, um, so I was able to authenticate um, against um, against Box. If we look in here, we'll see, we would see that my uh, refresh token uh, file. Oh, why is that doing that? Um, I put my refresh token uh, separately from my app config. So that's this is the client ID, the client secret, and my um, my redirect URI. I put my um, my refresh token that's just the way I set it up in a different file um, and so that's been updated and now I again I can go back and run this um, this notebook that moves data back and forth as many times as I want and it'll be literally months before it asks me to reauthenticate. so that's box um, we walked through that we have to go again we have to go into so, so that basically just which one part? Um, what, by running the authentication bootstrap and getting a refresh token, um, I don't have to authenticate every time I run a notebook that pulls data out of box. Otherwise, if you don't, I guess I'm ready for it. What does it look like to authenticate? That was where I hit that URL. And it took me to do you allow authentication to box? Oh, okay. okay. So, so there's some, some that, pointing and clicking. That right. Pointing. Yeah. Okay. So yes, that's that's you're just um, avoiding that um, having to reauthenticate uh, again and paste in the little code every time. So um, otherwise, um, you would need to do that every time. As we'll see here, I don't have a refresh token set up on my Google integration, but at least uh, Google makes uh, move uh, makes the uh, photo scan. It makes the uh, authentication um, check a little easier. So this is a G drive test, and what I'm doing here is I get my credentials, and then in this case, I was um, I needed to walk through this gentleman's G drive and get walk through all the folders and find all the PDF files. So I have a little recursive function that walks through and finds PDF. But we'll just go uh, as far far enough to show you how the auth works. Again, I've set up my client ID and I've created that JSON file in my dot create credentials folder so now I'm ready to to use this and again this is all it's all nicely um, the Google Docs are very nice as well the getting started drive uh, guide will dr walk you through all these steps um, that we'll, we're, you're gonna see in in my um, in my notebook so here we go some boilerplate work that's where I put my credentials this is some um, convenience functions I wrote. And okay, so uh, Google doesn't time out as quick, and it hands you this nice little uh, uh, box uh, text file field where you put in the result. So now I'm going to authenticate against G Drive. So when I click this link, it says, uh, would you like to allow access to your G Drive? I allow, say allow, and now it gives me a nice code here. I don't have to scroll to the end of the URL. Copy that, paste it in here, there. So authentication successful. Um, so at that point, I'm able to um, go forward, and I oh, I don't want to run that. This runs for hours. But basically, it's a very similar API where you can, um, let's go up here.
you can see that I walk through here and grab a bunch of, I walk all the folders in here and I'm looking for, I'm, I walk all the folders in this, in this uh, gentleman's uh, G drive. I'm looking for PDF files or more folders and I have to walk down the tree recursively to find that because again, they don't have a lot of convenience functions like give me every PDF file below this this uh, path, that sort of thing. So yeah, I had to walk the folders. So the APIs themselves are, are simple and not, and not hard to use, but getting the auth authentication set up is, is a little more confusing and a bit of a hassle. So are there, yeah. I have a comment actually. Okay. About, <clears throat> there's a big difference between box and drive in the ownership mod, uh, model. So whoever uploads a file to drive owns mm -hmm. the file. Whoever uploads the folder where a file is uploaded in Box is the owner of the file. Mm -hmm. So what that means is if you're in a research lab and you have students who come and go, mm -hmm. and they upload files to a shared folder in Drive, mm -hmm. they're still the owners, so when they go, their files go. That's my understanding of how it works. But in Box, if you create a folder and share it with people in your lab mm -hmm. and they upload files to that folder, you're, you're the owner. Mm -hmm. I have heard um, one of the things that the research data management group does advise on is there's a lot uh, one of the advantages of box they both have their upsides and downsides one of the advantages of box is much nicer um, uh, uh, authorization or, or permissions control yeah so that is one of the upsides of box um, if, if, if that's a concern that's a good point Gotcha. That's true. That's true. Any other questions that I might help with? Again, I, I, we went, I went through those quickly. Um, it wasn't very interactive because, like I said, you would need to set up the client ID and get that all going first. And that was a little hard to do in advance. Um, but I'm happy to stick around and, and walk anybody through it or, uh, or answer questions about the code. And again, everything you saw today, minus the, the G drive test that we're looking at right now, is in um, GitHub. I just haven't gotten this there yet. I just put it together on Monday. So yeah, the um, same the yes. So those will all be in, in one folder, and I, I can send that back out again or an, an update when I get the uh, the Google Drive example in there. And if you don't mind the uh, the ugly version of it, I'm happy to email it to you today. So I think what I was getting confused about with the authentication is with AWS or something like that. You have the and the secret, then you can just authenticate with those, and there's none of this having the point to click. And I don't really understand authentication very well. So, yeah. Uh, so I was a little surprised that I couldn't use <coughs> with the client ID and the client secret, and that that wasn't just sufficient to allow me to start interacting with, with these services. Interesting. Because this is app specific, so you could create yeah, an it's... app or create multiple apps. And they call it three legged. Three three leg authentication for that reason is you you have to authenticate it gives you back a code and then you enter it in the app you're using and, and um, it's, it's just a of, different security of, model. You're using OAuth too, and how much of it is creating yeah. Yeah. Too many Um, again, um, I think the initial authentication to get a refresh token is this way from, from my reading of it. I, okay. There may be areas of it I don't understand yet. But again, once you get your refresh token set up, you don't need to do that. That's what's happening when you, when I didn't have to, when the first time through, when I didn't have to bring up the web page and do, hand, hassle with that, it's because I'd set up a refresh token and now I just send those, that information out and I'm in. And that's, I can close out. You know, and, and come back in tomorrow or next week, and still send just those those tokens out, and I'm in. It won't have it won't ask me to go to the page and give authentication again. So that that's the upside of a refresh token is you don't need to do it every time. Any other questions? Again, uh, Chris and I'll be hanging out for a little while. So if you have uh, questions or um, comments, please come see us. I think um, Jason uh, wanted to ask you. Uh, uh, something, uh, ask you guys to fill out some um, evaluation forms before you go. So I'll, I'll turn it over to him. Uh, so thank you. So we have a quick survey. Just like to ask everybody.